Collect no How? How? Trying to use some of the design of the house. And the awkwardness of getting no money back. With no friends, you can track all your money. <laughs> Corporate responsibility and sustainability. As auditors and business advisors, our mission as institutions operate confidently and, and confidence. Growing with purpose. cash flow. I talked about that already. Infrastructure deficit. That's the challenge. Especially in Nigeria where we find we provide our own solar, diesel generator, as the case may be. Which makes our cost of goods produced or manufactured much higher than our competitors. So we have a, a, a comparative disadvantage with other people in our industry, in other clients. So once we find a way around that Infrastructure. Now, I'm not talking about light. Forget the road network for farm to market and so on. Um, axiomatic, self-evident. For me, I personally feel it's important for a problem shared is a problem solved. Talk to people. You don't know where the next idea will come from that will help you grow your business. Share your problems. That's my thing. So what growth opportunities are available to MSMEs? Next slide, please. So these are the growth opportunities. So the average growth rate, where am I saying? Digitizing your business. If you're not in the digital age, you need to hurry up and get there. Because in the end, you will be left behind and you won't have a business. You just have a registered company that means nothing on paper. I hope with this few words, I've been able to shed some lights. I've been able to encourage 
and I've been able to illuminate you on the challenges of MSMEs and of course the opportunities that exist during this VUCA period. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Wow. Professor Joseph Nana, Development Bank of Nigeria. Thank you so much. Let's keep clapping, please, to take us to his seat. That's a whole lot. I believe you've learned a lot from this. You know, it's interesting that they asked about collateral. Nobody raised hand. So <laughs> what I said on my chair was, I am sure they've not gone to apply yet. Because yeah. they were asking for your kidney, your yeah. mother's kidney, your father's liver. They, you your know? genotype is even Like, I don't it. understand. You know, when you, when you explained um, VUCA, because I kept on wondering what was VUCA. VUCA. Mm. Volatility, uncertainty, complex, ambiguity. I said Nigeria is just VUCA. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because... It doesn't make any sense yep. that somebody has a great idea and the person is about to start a business and the next thing you're saying is, go get a... Where did, if I had the collateral, I would have sold the collateral. Again, he said um, a problem shared is a problem solved, but not in all cases. Because in Nigeria right now, a problem shared is a WhatsApp status. I was yes. going to say that. You will tell, you will tell someone your problem. No, no, no. After five minutes, go check his WhatsApp status. You say something like, oh, boy, people get problem for this life. He's talking about you. So share your problem with the right person. Hello. When he said that, I said, yes. I'm coming to share my problem with you. I hope you agree. <laughs> All right, so we have um, yes. a few minutes to take questions. Please, if you have. I think that uh, we don't think about funding um, things to be done. For this, I don't know if I can say my vote. That won't take. Um, uh, I mean, want to talk to your uh, account officer at these respective banks and tell me, tell them what you're going through for them to create some sort of customized product. And they're willing to do that. Of SMEs, because I think that's the area we have problem. How well do we check the okay. accounting systems? Yes. Of the SMEs, when you give out loans, how well do you follow up with them? Should, um, of course, what that also means is that the lenders have to, um, have to, of course, relook how they do the lending because you have to stop lending to an area or to a sector and start lending more to another area or another sector because of all of this impact. What lenders, uh, what I would say that lenders are looking at, okay, especially for MSMEs, is when first understand that the money that the lender is lending, a lot of that money most of that money is not his own. It's your money and my money that they are lending to him. And so he has a responsibility to make sure that when that money goes out to him, that money comes back to you and me, right? Whenever we come to the bank. So what lenders want is with your um, sales, and let me just say your, the flow of, of cash in your business, is consistency. I mean, I know that there's been the issue of, you know, repayments that um, the lenders are weary of, right? Um, does that does that affect today? I mean, they're saying that small businesses, you know, shouldn't they, they, because they're they're pretty young, so they are not. Um, I mean, lenders are weary of lending to them. You know, how, how, how is this also happening? Because if they thrive, they can also see us as, a, as their financier, and we continue to do business, and it's a win-win situation. So we want to build capacity um, in the market. But the thing is, like my colleague mentioned, technology that's been put in place to kind of build those patterns, or identify those patterns and trends, and reduce the amount of time that it takes to qualify. It's not enough because they don't know, they don't have the capacity, the skill sets to manage those funds properly. So capacity building is actually very critical to every business person. Um, knowledge is a continuous process. There are new things that keep evolving. There are better ways to become efficient in running your business. So you would always have to keep learning more to be able to deliver more. You can't give what you do not have. So by improving yourself, improving your skill set, you get to even, of course, deliver more and also your clients are more satisfied. 
So capacity building is actually critical that every SME should look into. Startups come to me and say, hey, or even SMEs come to me and say, hey, I, I need some money. I'm like, okay, so what is your monthly recurring revenue at the moment? Mm -hmm. Let us be guaranteed that you are even making money because you are going to learn to because you want to either scale your product or consolidate upon your product market fit. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So the readiness to want to get that lending or that investment or that finance is important. And that's where I think the capacity building should kind of focus more on in trying to prepare SMEs to be investor already. How are you doing with your numbers? We need to also be mindful that uh, SMEs devolves through various stages uh, in, in their life cycle. So um, at the stock exchange, um, we have um, products or value proposition that speaks to an equity listing for SMEs and high growth companies. Now, you might say to me, what percentage of the three structures of the SME ecosystem um, represents that? It's a small percentage, um, probably um, about 20 to 25 percent. But what we are doing is we want to deliberately, first of all, make sure that those companies, those SMEs that, are, that is on top of the strata, have the ability to raise cheap and sustainable capital. The other thing that we are doing in a very conscious, deliberate and um, informative way is to look at the lower strata, which is the MSME and the micro. And from that perspective, we've come up with a product that we believe is a win-win for everyone. Um, we're looking at what we call um, the NGX Elite Network. And basically what it means is taking a typical SME company, irrespective of where their funding cycle is or where their growth cycle is, and mentoring them um, to grow, to have corporate governance, to be investor ready, to put together um, information um, asymmetry that liquidity providers or capital providers can be able to look at and take informed decisions in lending them money. We should also remember that Capital would always identify or seek opportunities, and capital would always go to where there are opportunities, but there is a risk adjusted return to rate. So, what we are doing with the Elite Network is also to make sure that we prepare these companies you know, to be investor ready, to be IPO ready. Um, to have um, good processes and capabilities that would make them beautiful price to uh, potential investors or fund providers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so in terms of um, how MSMEs can get loans, um, these are challenging times, as we know. Um, we know we're in an election year. Um, we also know inflation levels are up. Um, we know exchange rate volatility is there. So there's a lot going on and SMEs broadly, especially MSMEs, are challenged. And they're the ones who have a difficult time accessing credit. So the real question is, how can they maintain and ultimately thrive through these uncertain times? And my submission is simple. Ensure you have the right type of business or service you're providing. Make sure you know your clientele, your marketing plan. If you have these things in place, put your books in order because your banker will always look for your cash flow statement to see if you have a positive cash flow. Once you do that, you can walk into most banks and say, look, I have a good business here. I have this cash flow. Can I get some type of soft loan to help me through these periods? And nine times out of ten, they will grant you that loan, provided you have a positive cash flow. And these are um, banks that I know of. I don't want to name drop any bank, but there are banks out there that have gone beyond collateral lending. 
So cash flow lending, psychometric evaluations, and so on. You can get on an app, quickly apply, you get a soft loan right away. Interest rates might be a challenge, but guess what? If your business is high turnover, interest rates wouldn't matter. The segment of the SME states that we keep forgetting, even the nomenclature does not include them, where you just started, that's the nano and the micro space, and that's where about over 70% of that 41 million lie, right? Um, so we still wanted to capture them, so we built a community, uh, guys, with these services, pro bono, you know, so what we do is to rally experts like this to come and support them, um, and we have thousands of uh, MSMEs in that space uh, within our community, they are in this hall as we speak. Um, so I'm a community builder, SME community builder, transformation professional, and um, we're also building a platform now, strictly invoice factoring for SMEs. Um, well, that, that is on one side. You see, when we talk about pricing, uh, especially for SMEs, it's very important that, uh, I, I want to talk about it from an angle that maybe most of us have not really looked critically at. And that's the angle of the market. Um, you see, a lot of times we approach product development, price, points, definition, and a lot of other variables from from either competition, which can be global, or what is the trend, what looks like an opportunity, and we don't properly dissect the market. Uh, what can the market buy? What are they able to buy? And what are they willing to buy? Small business, when you are pricing, when you are defining your product, when you are designing your product, you need to first understand your market. What market do I want to play? Is this the student market? Is it the working class market? Is it the ultra HNI market? And then design your operating model to release your product at a price point that will be attractive to that market. Thank you. It's not compulsory that you must do auto because you saw your friends doing a lot of auto and they were making money. One thing I tell people about business is SMEs about business that once you have the mindset to say, I want to own a small business. The type of business doesn't matter. What matters is what value are you bringing to the 200 million people? Are people already doing it? How can I do it better and more efficient? So it is not, you know, I, I, so, I, so I can say that every SME can be good at any business if they understand that they are coming with a solution. So if I'm talking about real estate now, it's not like if I start another company, I will still do very well together to, because you understand that that's a problem. The, the SMEs needs to look, listen to people that have succeeded, the ones that have failed, and that's a value, and it can be paid for it. So you must create a value. There is too much need in this country to jump back. There is so much need, and you have to sit down, eat, you have to sit down, and it's not all about money. Partnership, what's your value? If I'm starting a business, I'm one person, I've tried to start business with money. Um, so I would say that from a communications perspective, what we always do first, or uh, once we are onboarding a client, um, the first question we always ask them is, do you have a crisis communications plan? So while we're um, developing a marketing communications plan or a public relations plan, we are planning for crisis. So um, planning for crisis does not mean that you are being negative. So take for instance, you have a business model, you have something that you've put out, you have everything ready, right? Um, you're going to now look at it now from a consumer perspective. What could actually go wrong? That's the first thing to do. Start identifying the things that could go wrong. Don't look at it because, oh, it's my business. If, if you have staff or people around you, just ask them what would be like the things that would come up. So once you identify some of the problems, now it might not be the same problem that would come out, but what it would do is, by the time something else comes out, there's already something similar. There's something for you to fall back to that's very close to um, solving what you have right now. So if you identify the problem, that's the first thing. Okay, now, so these are the problems that we think can come out from this, from this thing. These are the complaints people can get. If someone falls down while they're using our product, if someone says that I'm trying to transfer money, my money is not going, you put them, these are the things that we're going to see. Partnership, this key part of formalizing the agreement, 
which most often, particularly if it has to do with um, families and friends, we tend to ignore. If it has to do with family and friends, most often, we tend to ignore. We we'll go, don't worry, we we'll do it, we we'll run it. And eventually, you start um, having issues. We are all emotional beings. Um, is a friend team, is a family team. Forgetting the fact that business is business, then if you leave it open, definitely you have made it a more of personal, one-on-one -on -one, um, thing. So it's important that you have all of this spelled out. It is very, very important that um, everything is documented, which um, for most um, businesses, SMEs in particular, we tend to, to ignore. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very difficult to run a business. It's almost, it's killing. I mean, we put on smiles, we laugh as if it's okay. Um, it's very, very killing. You talked about risk, you talked about a lot of things. Um, uh, we just lost a major person in the company, like on Friday. We had a meeting on Friday afternoon. In the evening, the person passed away. Like, this is sea level. Nobody thought about it. He's in charge of operations. Nobody thought about it, and it just happened. And these are the things that you, you, you have in business. Apart from that, I'm going to tell you about partnerships. In partnership, you need to figure out who is this big brand that I can anchor myself onto so that distribution becomes easy. Flexibility with business strategy. So take uh, 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 Netflix, for example, delivering uh, DVDs uh, to homes. But their vision is to entertain the world. And they realize that you know they can't entertain the world delivering DVDs from door to door. Uh, they realized that there were limitations. They realized that there was, there was an opportunity with the internet and with streaming. So what they did, they moved, they, 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 pivot, they pivoted. They pivoted online, uh, streaming their content online and, and, and just reaching their, 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 their customers online as well. And you see, for, for, for businesses and entrepreneurs, I think the, the most important thing, the, the most difficult one is the first pivoting. Uh, once, you, once you've pivoted the first time, uh, you find out that repeating it again and again and again and again uh, becomes even, even less overwhelming. So going back to my example of Netflix, they kept, you know, they kept you know, pivoting, they kept you know, changing their strategy, adapting it to what, um, what is going to make them the most money in line with their strategy of entertaining the, the world. So what they did, what they did was to uh, review their, 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 their strategy in terms of what they stream. So they've moved from, 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 from getting content from third parties to having original content. Right now, uh, uh, Netflix has like 50% uh, original content versus the licensed content. So, so my message you know, for, for businesses, for entrepreneurs, for founders, is that yes, you have a business strategy, you have a model that you're working with, but don't be too fixated on it. You need to be flexible, you need to, you need to, you need to, be, you need to get feedback from the market, and based on what you're getting, you need to adapt even your approach uh, to the market. So First Founders basically uh, is one of the fastest rising venture studio focused on partnering with early stage founders to build, scale and fund their startups. So we are more interested in working with um, founders with, at their idea stage. You know, a lot of investors are most, mostly interested in working with founders at their product or growth stage. But we love to work with them at the idea stage because we feel that we have more of founders with very bright solutions at the bottom of the pyramid but do not have the investing opportunity to be able to build that idea into a product and then further take that product to a product market fit and onto a growth stage. So we are more interested at that bottom of the pyramid. So the unique selling proposition for us is that we identify ideas that people wouldn't have imagined existed at the bottom of the pyramid. But we see that gold mine and we pick it up from that point of conception and build it to the point where you become a teenager in the real sense of things. As a business, we've been able to work with 65 startups um, in the last one year. And um, we have been able to consolidate on our community to grow from 500 to almost 1,000. And um, um, last year, we partnered with the Dubai World Trade Center and the JITEX conference, which is often done in Dubai as a community partner to take startups from here, from Nigeria to Dubai, to meet with investors. And um, most importantly, we've been able to develop 10 you know, working startups 
within the company and we are still, we are still trying to do more. Hi, my name is Nelly Abogu, aka Niger Branchik. I'm the convener of Embassy Trade Fair and also the founder of Nelly's Nigeria. So what I do basically is to help business owners to grow online, teaching them digital skills that will help them to scale their businesses. I have done this for over 10,000 businesses, getting them to hit six digits in their business consistently. So one of the biggest problems I see a lot of business owners have is that they find it difficult to adapt to the new digital wave. Um, while they are still struggling to get hang of what is how to use it, a certain app, there's an already an update. So technology still still is a problem and understanding how to use it has also become a, a bigger problem. So this is where we also come in. We do a lot of education around how to grow your business and using um, technology and understanding how to, to use different seamless applications that can help you to just stand out and scale. So this we're content led we integrated a marketing agency. We help brands stand out. We like to call it in the crowded ocean. Uh, with our idea to think like a shark. So thinking like a shark basically means four things. It means to be disruptive, it means to be daring, it means to be intuitive. Then the last one is a word that we coined called to be wavy, which means to be trendy and um, up to date. So we help brands, you know, stand out. There are many, um, there's so many brands today. So in all the industries, so we make sure that whatever brands we work with, we help them stand out in the crowded world or ocean with the ideas. My name is Blessing Emmanuel Macaulay. I am the founder of PR Fusions. PR Fusions is a public relations agency that specializes in serving um, emerging and growing businesses such that they can meet their communication through strategic communication. Um, so my biggest takeaway has been the learnings I've heard from my co-speakers um, at the event, at the SME 100 event. Uh, a couple of things that have also been forced in me is one is Nigerian's market is 200 million, but the real market is not 200 million. There's a subset of a subset that you need to be specific on. Are you going for the over 70% survival mode people? Or are you going for the ultra HNI that are just about 1% or 0.01%? You need to be very specific and know exactly what you're strategizing to ensure you reach the right person. And that thing is being ensured that you are doing something different, not just as a business. Because from my experience, I see a lot of me too businesses. Most of our clients are me too businesses. We ask them, okay, so why should I buy from you and not from this man? They really can't say. So they end up having to rely on pricing, discount. So you buy from me because my product is cheaper, which is a no-win situation because it goes cheaper, it goes cheaper, and everybody loses at the end of the day. So another thing that is very important for SME that I learned as well is to have something to differentiate you from others. And if you can't find that differentiation, you don't even start the business because you start to struggle if you don't have a lot of capital to push you beyond what the market is doing. Grant Thornton is a global uh, a group of uh, entities offering tax audit and advisory services. We are currently in over 135 countries and with uh, over 62,000 people across these countries. Our unique selling point is the traditional audit, which we call uh, audit and uh, advisory, statutory uh, work, audit and assurance, I mean. Uh, but of course, the uh, taxation and the advisory services are key uh, points of sale for us. Um, for tax, we are engaged in uh, the tax, uh, routine tax filings, tax advisory, tax health check, and all other forms of taxation. And then for the advisory services, we are into transaction advisory service, we are into investigations and um, liquidations, we are into the capital market operations, we are also into IT and transformation, uh, digital and transformation services. We also offer human resource uh, management services. So it's a whole lot of uh, services we offer in our domain services. Audits, of course, refers to the routine uh, statutory audits that's required by law at the end of the period. But there's an assurance aspect of it where you also render some uh, advisory services to ensure that uh, the audit uh, is up to date. For instance, if we have to review an engagement that is already done, 
by another auditor. That could just be uh, a review engagement, which is a part of an uh, assurance service.